Leopards. I'm here with this red. And I'm R2. I'm here with RDJ TV and we are at RollerCon where you can learn from some of the top coaches in the world. And look who we have for you today. Freight train. I'm going to go over how to effectively push walls. I have two different methods for you. Um, I'm primarily a pushy jammer, very physical jammer. So uh, yeah, doing this is going to make you sweat a lot. So uh, that's a good thing for you. But uh, that's what I'm going over today, how to effectively push walls, two different methods. Let's do it. The situation that we're dealing with right now is the wall is very effective at closing the seams every time you make a hit. So right now I'm not trying to get through the wall. My goal is to push the wall forward to the point that someone's gonna have to start bridging, okay? The first thing I like to do is try to see if anyone is sticking out of the wall. If there's anyone sticking out of the wall, I'm gonna try to make my contact with that person first, okay? And when I make this contact, ideally I'm gonna be pushing people at a 45. So I'm pushing at a 45, but I'm also moving at a, um, uh, making forward progress, okay? So when I make this hit here, I kind of wind up with my back leg here. And then when I spring, I hit this person like this at a 45. And what usually happens is this space opens up right here. A little diamond hole opens up. So if I did have an opportunity to cut through the wall, this is where I would do it when I make that impact with that person and they spread open. But if they did not spread open, I want to I wanna at least get them moving just a little bit. Now the important thing here is when you spring from your leg, you want to make sure you're not too far back. If I spring here too far back, there's no power, there's no follow through to get through this person, okay? So when you approach this wall and you're about to push them, make sure you're right up on this wall here. That way when you spring, the, the body will move, okay? When I spring, ideally, I would like to try to get my shoulder in front of this person just a little bit. That way I can make some forward progress before they close it off, okay? So I'm here, my shoulder's a little bit in front. I try to push, push, push until they can close it back up. Another thing that I do here is uh, something called a body weight push. So basically I'm here, I'm not, so if I was pushing normally without the body weight push, I'll be here and I'll just be pushing with my legs, right? With the body weight push, I'm actually gonna like lean my body on these people. So if we take away the legs and I just lean, they kind of roll, okay? So I wasn't doing much with my legs there. All I did was lean and they kind of started to roll. that lean and you're gonna have to get your feet moving at the same time so you're using both skills to get the wall rolling okay so that looks like this so you're gonna lean and then move with your feet okay I'm here I'm gonna lean spring and move my feet at the same time What I'm going to show you is how I like to um, push the wall using method one, which is always be being on the opposite side of the brace, which means if the brace is over here, I want to be over here. When the brace moves again, I want to be over here. Okay? And then just keep moving on the opposite side of the brace. Now the reason why I like to do that is because usually when the braces um, with these two people back here this is the strongest part of the wall okay so I always want to be on the least strongest part of the wall so I'm always going to be on the opposite side of the brace because number one they're looking at you and this is the strongest part of the wall okay you don't have to make it predictable which means you're going left right left right uh, you're going to uh, eventually have to start putting a little bit of jukes in there Okay, so for this next part, 
uh, this ID badge holder thing. It's gonna represent the pack. So I'm gonna push uh, the method one that I showed you being on the opposite side of the bridge. Uh, so now there's a pack, which means someone's gonna have to start bridging eventually. Okay? talk about method two. With method two, I will um, actually push on this seam a little bit longer to uh, wait for these blockers to sit down on me, which means they're gonna sit in my pocket. So what I do here is I push up this seam and I wait for these blockers to sit. When they sit on me, that tells me it's time to move to the other side of the wall. When I move to the other side of the wall, that's when the brace will usually come on this side again. And then I'm pushing here. I wait for the same thing to happen. And then I move to the other side, okay? So what I'm doing here is I'm trying to make forward progress little by little by little. So it kind of scoops. So when I push here, the wall scoops up a little bit. Then I move, then it moves up a little bit, move up a little bit, move up a little bit, until we can get someone to start uh, bridging. push I'm pushing and we start rolling if we're rolling at a good pace I'm actually going to try to stay on this line until I can get someone to get someone to start bridging so what we're going to talk about now is what my feet is doing behind this wall so as I'm pushing the wall as soon as I feel them engage, I'm going to disengage and I'm going to do like a little rainbow behind these people, okay? When you do this, it's important that this rainbow is a, a very like, tight rainbow. So you're basically going to be here. When you move, you don't take that much, uh, you don't move that many feet back. Okay, so what you don't want to do is, so I'm here, I'm pushing, I disengage, come out, and I come back around, okay? I was a little bit too far back. You want to keep it tight. You don't want these uh, blockers to be able to roll back on you, all right? Put this together. I'll see you next time. Bye bye. Bye bye.